Okay, today we're removing a failed RTU off the roof of an office building and installing a new RTU. Here's the old unit on the roof, almost 40 years old. So we're going to disconnect the power, turn off the gas, disconnect the gas line, disconnect the thermostat wires coming into the unit. We'll disconnect the plenum here and get it ready for liftoff. So with the gas line disconnected, it's turned off and it is capped off. We have disconnected the power. We have disconnected the plenum from the old unit and secured the plenum. Here's a new unit. It's a Dakin. We're going to go ahead and unwrap it and do an inspection on the unit, make sure it was not damaged in shipping. This unit did not come standard with uh, condenser hail guards. I'll install those a little bit later. So we'll start the condenser. Looks pretty good. The condenser cooling fan looks good. Fins aren't bent. Nothing's obviously damaged. Look down inside. And I'll check to make sure it spins freely. Filter access for this unit's right here. Here's your supply and return. It can be horizontal or vertical. Here's a data plate for the unit. Three phase, 460 volt. And this one's gonna run on natural gas. Your burner's inside there. Compressor inside there. Electronic access in here. So, so far everything looks okay. We'll start pulling panels. It comes with filters, that's nice. Woo! See a little bit of minor damage from the factory. Check the heat exchanger tubes. You can see down there I need to place the cover panel because we're not doing a vertical supply and return, we're doing the horizontal supply and return to mate up with that old plenum on the roof. And check the blower motor, we'll check the burners, gas valve, draft inducer motor, pressure switch, etc. Make sure everything looks good, no loose connections, broken connections, everything's all there. Back side of the coil. This is the ECM blower motor. I do like how easy it is to access the blower motor. That's nice. Now we got to cut the unit strut to make the new base frame for this new unit. Unit strut is really versatile. Comes with different brackets you see here. And it simply bolts together. As far as you got all the pieces cut. It's also called Super Strut. Center support, T-plates. So here's a close-up view. Getting all the legs installed. It's upside down right now, obviously. Flip it up, right side up. There we go, ready for the new unit. And the crane arrived. He's going to set up his outriggers. I'm going to crane up and remove the old unit off the roof first. And we'll set that down here in our lobby. 
and a local HVAC company will haul it away. They'll recover the remaining refrigerant in the system and keep records for three years per EPA 608 regulations. Now we'll go ahead and crane up the new art to you. There she is. We have that new base frame in place. Crane Company is very helpful, great guys, real professional. And we're just simply going to line it up with the frame, let her down. There we go. Wow. There she is in her final resting place. So I'm going to install some hail guards out of expanded steel. I use these self tappers and some fender washers to attach it to the unit. Be careful when you drive the self tappers in. You do not want to drive them into your coil. That would be bad. So make sure they're short enough they don't pierce your coil. The reason I'm using expanded steel. Uh, works well for hail guards, quick and easy to install, and it's a fraction of the price of buying the actual manufacturer's uh, hail guards. If I remember correctly, I think this expanded steel was like 50 bucks, whereas the hail guards were several hundred dollars. And the expanded steel still allows plenty of airflow through your condenser coil. So moving on to this, connecting the ductwork. Here's the tools we'll use. Here's some of the supplies. Uh, this air duct sealant is for indoor and outdoor use. And we're going to attach our uh, duct insulation with this. So just a quick demo, sort of a hand bender or hand break. Just kind of show you how it works. And there's all the duct worked, installed and sealed and connected. Have our electrical connected up. Now we'll go ahead and reconnect our gas line. Make sure you use pipe dope and uh, pipe tape that's rated for gas use. Okay, we got our sediment trap, our union, our shutoff valve. We're going to go ahead and use some bubble soap, bubble leak detector, spray down all of our joints. Right now we have gas coming to this valve, but the valve is currently closed, obviously. So no leaks, we'll go ahead and turn the gas on to the unit and then spray on the other side of the gas valve. 
up to the gas valve in the unit right here. And under those two brass screws, that's where you would adjust your uh, gas pressure. You can use your manometer to check for um, uh, inlet gas pressure and manifold gas pressure. So now we'll do an initial check of everything. Check amp draw, voltage draw, make sure the spans, fans are spinning in the proper direction. So far the fans are spinning in the proper direction. Check the compressor, check amp draw. And the way I check each heating and cooling as I use my jumpers at the unit itself. So I'll jumper it just to fan, I'll jumper it to AC, jumper it to heat, make sure everything works properly. Then I'll make my final thermostat connections. Just using a clamp on amp meter. Let's check our burners now. So the burners are good, nice blue flame, steady, no flame rollout. Draft inducer fan is spinning and running. Flame sensing rod is completely engulfed in flame. Make our final wire connections. There it is finished and ready to be put into service. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, and thanks for watching.